and welcome to my little corner of the interwebs where I post videos on this YouTube channel we shall hereby call the scientist hay farmer and today we are doing by request a tour of all of my stuff don't get your hopes up it's not impressive but it's mine and I like it and it gets the job done for me today we're going to be looking at what I'm more aptly calling this video all the equipment needed for a small hay farm. So let's get started. Let's start with the essential. You need to have a tractor. This is my trusty Ford 4610. It is 63 horsepower overall. It's around 52 horsepower at the PTO. I have a video on it, a video review. I will see if I can figure out how to post that link somewhere. Go check that out if you wanna know more about this tractor. This is a great all around square baling tractor for a small hay operation. It has two hydraulic remotes on the back that I can run my uh, hydraulics for on the implements. And it does have a quick detached loader that I do take off when I am making hay. If we move over, let's just go in the sequence in which we'll actually farm hay. Then we come over and here we've got my 488, my New Holland 488 hay bine. This is probably the nicest piece of equipment I own because it's hardly been used. I paid $2,500 for this out of a dealership in Illinois and had it trucked to me here. And it was like new, still is almost. If we come down here, there's still paint and primer on that, uh, I'm not actually sure what that surface is, but it's hardly been worn away. And the rollers are immaculate. They still have the little rubber uh, treddy uh, thingies on them from when they're molded. That's the official name because I don't know what they're called either. And then I had taken the uh, regular guards off and I had put stub guards on a couple years ago, which was a phenomenal transformation for this machine. So if we just circle around it, it has two hydraulics required. And those hydraulics go to this cylinder back here, which raise and lower the machine. Your hay mower is what's required to cut the hay, of course. And this one's called a mower conditioner because it has these conditioning rolls right here. The grass or hay moves through those and it gets, uh, the, the stems get crimped as they move through those rollers and it allows the moisture to leave the stem faster. So as you can see, very clean machine. We got shiny paint, good tires. I love this, it is a smooth running smooth running piece. So the next thing we would do is we'd mow it and now we would tet it. So we can come over here to the tetter. We'll talk about that, that M in a bit. Come over here to my tetter. This is a four basket tetter. This one is an Agco model 4227. Also the same thing as a new idea and the same thing as a Heston, I believe as well. It's kind of a light duty tether. It's, um, it's not a heavy one. It's not a coon. I used to have a coon. I used to have a Citrix. I actually like a little bit of, uh, I like both of those better, but it gets the job done and it actually does do a nice job heading. You just gotta be a little, be gentle with it. This will tad two rows at a time once they've been mowed. And for those of you that aren't aware, what the tether does is it spreads out the hay evenly across the field out of the windrows after it's been mowed and it kind of fluffs it up as well and it takes about a day off your total dry time because it just makes that hay dry a lot faster so that's the tether really recommend having one of these because they can get you out of a major bind if you have a situation where you've got rained on hay 
or the humidity has been high, nights have been cold, whatever your weather conditions that are just not making the hay dry well, one of these can get it dried for you real fast. I paid four grand for that. Moving on. We will come over to the next step in the hay making process, the rake. So this here is my rotary rake. It is a Miller Pro. It is a nine foot rotor and it has a nine foot clean sweep as a result and a 13 foot, 13 foot working width, which means I can move the curtain out another five, four or five feet or so, four feet probably. And um, that means from the distance of that time to the end of the curtain is gonna be 13 foot. This rake also uses the tractor hydraulics. So does the tether to raise and lower the arms. It uses the tractor hydraulics to lift and lower the tying arms. So you can pop it up. There's a cylinder right there. You can pop it up once you get to the end of a row. All in all though, very heavy built machine. I really like it. Do have a little oil leak on this arm. I replaced the seal. Still leaks. Oh well. I guess that's part of the game. Not sure why it's still leaking. So finally, once we're done raking, we will go over to, this is probably my favorite piece of equipment, maybe the mower. I don't know what I like better between my baler and my mower. I really love my mower, but that baler is just a sexy looking piece. I love it. And 95% of the time, it is a phenomenally operating piece as well. Gave me a bunch of issues this year, which is uh, not typical, but this is my New Holland 311. It is in great shape. It will eat some serious hay. Makes square bales. I have a whole bunch of videos I've made on this baler and how to do different uh, things on it. Go look through my channel and check those out to get studied up on this. So this is a really nice baler. Knotters, I keep the knotters very clean. I clean all of my stuff out very thoroughly at the end of each use. So it's always in good shape, ready to go for the next. And one of the remaining things, look at, you see how this hay has gone here? You know what causes that? Equus calibus. Am I saying that right, Cabalus? I don't remember. Also commonly known as a horse. My horses get in here and they eat the hay. I will be making one more video this year that shows basically how to break down your baler at the end of the season and get all this hay cleaned out and, and get it winterized and ready to go for the spring. Anyway, this is my 311. I love it. A lot of videos I've got on my channel working this too. All right, let's go check out my wagons. So the next thing you'll want if you are making hay is you'll need a number of wagons. Depending on how much hay you're making, you may need more or less. My wagons are eight foot wide and 16 foot long. Uh, they are all on John Deere running gears with the exception of this guy. I don't remember what kind of running gear it is, but it's a real heavy duty one. This is a little deer gear. And then these three here are deer gears as well. I really like the deer gears because they trail and follow really well. It's the only type of gear I will buy, unless it's a good one like this. Um, uh, 
I also look for what I've heard them called fifth wheel styled gears. I don't know if that's actually correct or not, but basically if you're looking to buy a gear, you can see how the tie rods and the steering happens behind that axle. And so they're being turned from back there. Avoid gears that actually have the tie rods right there and are being connected by some bar to the tongue here. They don't follow well, they sway bad. If you are buying wagons and planning on roading them at all, you will really thank yourself for buying nice gears that will follow straight behind you. Every one of these gears you could pull 60 miles an hour down the road. I don't recommend doing that, but you could and they will stay right on you and they will not sway. That gear without a bed on it, I actually have pulled 60 miles an hour down the road before. For the decking, I just use treated lumber, regular treated pine. This one I did try and experiment where I put um, a treated, uh, no, I'm sorry. This one I did an experiment where I put asphalt sealer on it and it kind of failed miserably. Probably because I've already put used motor oil, not on this one. This one is just one I just bought this year, but these ones have all been treated with used motor oil. Wait till a real hot day, roll it on there, and it just soaks up the wood. And uh, the wood will eventually dry. It won't hurt the hay. You can see this is completely dry. Anyways, these are my wagons. Some of them have flotation tires. Some have truck or, uh, truck or traditional tread trailer tires on them. I stack 100 bales on each wagon. Just makes for easy math. It makes for four courses of 25 bales. If I were to build another wagon, I would build them longer, probably 18 or 20 footers, so I could get another row on front. I can go six high and get 120 on these, but I typically just stack them five high and, and go for an even hundred. So those are the wagons. Next, I have a flatbed trailer. And depending on how much hay you are delivering, if you are delivering hay at all, you may or may not want one of these. I do wish I had a deck over because that would allow me to transport more hay and a little more efficiently at that. But I can still get 100 to 120 bales stacked on this trailer very comfortably. It is about seven foot wide and it's 18 foot long. That is 16 feet on the flat with a two foot dovetail. What I did was I went and welded on little D-rings at the mid point of every bale. And there's another one there, and there's another one there, and then there's another one there. All on there. So my first row, I stack bales on their sides and there's five across and I I make sure I line them up so the center of each bale falls on one of these D-rings and that way I can strap each course. Then the second row, my bales will be stacked on the flat perpendicular to the first row. And so they'll be running this way. Um, so you'll get two across and then they go that way all the way down. And then the third row, they are stacked on the flat perpendicular to the second row. And that ties everything in. Just occurred to me that I probably should make a video on stacking and tying in hay. I bet that might be useful to people. Anyway, that's the next piece of equipment I have is my flatbed, which I do use for delivering hay to people. Once the hay has come in, sometimes the wagons may need a sit if they're not getting unloaded or someone's coming to pick them up or maybe we're bringing the wagons in right before rain. And I had this steel shed built here as a, a pull through. I can fit two wagons in there. I can just pull them straight through, get some out of the weather. The only disadvantage to the tall sides like that is you can still get a lot of rain into the front. So I still have to throw a tarp over the fronts of the wagons because a little rain can blow in there, but this does keep about 90% of the rain off. So that covers it for kind of the bare minimum equipment you need to make hay. 
but I have a few other things that I might as well show just because we're out here and uh, these are maybe nice to haves but not necessities let's check out this 1946 Farmo M it's my buddy's tractor he's got it out here it is really nice to have a second tractor to maybe rake ahead of you so you don't have to try to rake in bail with the same tractor which is actually what I do by the way it's not the most efficient way to do it but it does time efficiency I should say but it does make for um, financial and operational efficiency because I only have one tractor until that tractor breaks and then you have nothing this is my buddy's 1946 Farm All M he bought it to kind of mess around with and uh, theoretically make hay with or help me make hay but we haven't actually used it for that yet one of the reasons is we are rebuilding the hydraulic belly pump and needs a new seal because it leaks out the hydraulic fluid but theoretically if it did not leak we would have hydraulics which could raise and lower a tether or the rake the tractor has a nice patina going on but don't judge it by the way it looks because it runs very very nice in fact i do have a video on spreading manure the antique way and this this bad boy here is actually what's pulling my spreader tractor runs very smooth it's in excellent mechanical condition and then over here this is also my buddy's brush hog this is a john deere 503 brush hog i've got an old ford that my dad and my grandpa used to mow or chop corn stalks with that that brush hogs in my other shed brush hogs are nice to have to keep the edges of fields mowed or maybe you decided you weren't going to cut a field so you just want to chop it maybe you got it cut but you're not going to be able to get it or it got rained on you just want to chop it um, it's nice to have a brush hog for that over there right here is a 250 gallon walsh sprayer a bit of a dinosaur and i do have the um boom off to repair the hoses that was my other grandpa's so it's nice to have a big sprayer too to spray your fields i don't have that thing uh, working yet because i'm replacing all the hoses and i just brought it back with me from his farm this year and since we're at it that is my very trusty john deere model h manure spreader it works so good I've put a new chain in it. You don't really need a manure spreader for haying, but I've got some other equipment called hay burners. Um, again, we call those horses. And they do make a byproduct of burning hay, and the byproduct goes in there and goes onto my pastures. I don't put it on my hay fields because I don't want the weeds to get into the fields. So there you have it, with the exception of maybe the manure spreader. That is kind of the bare necessities you need as a small farm to make hay. If you are interested in getting into making hay, this is kind of a video tutorial of everything you can expect that you are gonna to need to have. And I do recommend getting the nicest equipment that you can buy because it will pay dividends in the future. Like I always say, I hope this is useful. I hope you found it informative. If you do like this and wanna see other material like this, then hit the subscribe, hit the notification button, you will know when I post new videos, which isn't that frequently. And then like it if you found this fun to watch. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.